So the next thing that we have to tackle is to figure out what the relationship is between the number of peaks that you see in an NMR spectrum and the structure of a compound. And the concept that we work around is something called chemically equivalent hydrogens. And if you have chemically equivalent hydrogens, they produce the same signal. So if you have, for example, two methyl groups that are chemically equivalent, the methyl groups uh, will by themselves produce one signal each, but these signals will add up, and then instead of seeing a signal for three hydrogens, which you end up seeing as a signal for six hydrogens. So methylene groups, methyl groups, methine groups, these are all different types of signals. So if you had, for example, a structure that looked like this, you would expect to find different peaks for these groups, as well as these methyl groups here would be different from this methyl group here. So in total, you'd expect to find one, two, three, and then this turns out these two methyl groups are the same, so you have four different uh, sets of hydrogens. If you think about the number of hydrogens that you find at each peak, you would expect to find three here, three here, one here, two here, three here. Well, the methyl groups, two of the methyl groups are the same, that's these two, and we'll talk about how we know that. And this methyl group is different, so you expect to find it in slightly different positions. The methylene and the methine group here would also give different signals. So in total, again, you'd find four different peaks for this particular compound. So one of the things you can do to tell if uh, a group is the same uh, fairly simply, is to think about what it looks like if you were to rotate the molecule. So a lot of times people call this a rotation test. And you can also use what's called a mirror test in the same way that we determine whether or not a compound is meso. You can look to see if there's a mirror plane in the molecule and if the top side and the bottom side are essentially identical or are, are identical, then So here are a couple of uh, compounds, and what I'd like to do is try to apply the mirror and the rotation test on this. So taking a look at the first compound, I think it's pretty simple to see that if I were to draw a dashed line to represent a mirror plane or a rotational axis along this part of the molecule, you can see how this side of the molecule that group and that group are the same, and that group and that group are the same. Uh, what they say in a rotation test is imagine that you close your eyes and you rotate the molecule and you look at it, could you tell the difference if it had rotated? Which is a little silly because you can't really do that unless you build a model, but at the same time, it's a useful way of thinking, is that side of the molecule exactly the same as the other side? So this particular compound then, if you look at uh, these groups, um, if I were to label that A, that would be A, that would be B, and that would be B, and that would be C, so I would have three sets of peaks for this particular compound. Let's take a look at the molecule on the bottom. So now the mirror test doesn't work as well. Like, that is, I can't draw a dashed line down here and tell whether, and say the left and the right hand sides are the same. So in that instance, what we'll do then is we'll look at the groups and it's the molecules asymmetry and say, well, definitely that's a group. That's a group. That's going to be a group in the NMR spectrum. That's going to be a different group. 
So A, B, C, D, E. And then when you come to these, if you were to draw a line like this or think about the rotation of that bond along that axis, these two groups that I circled, which we'll call F, would be identical, and you would expect those to produce the exact same NMR signal. So in this case, we would have A, B, C, D, E, and F, one, two, three, four, five, and six different signals for this particular compound. So here's a couple of other examples. Um, on the top molecule, again, you can see a fairly simple mirror test by drawing a line here. So let's call the methyl groups A, so that would be A and that would be A. Uh, but that also means that these groups are also A because they're the ones that are mirrored across and then rotationally this has symmetry on this axis here. So those A groups are the same. Now there's a methylene group here, and, or sorry, methine group here and a methine group here, so that would be B. And this group here would be C. So we'd end up having three different signals for this particular compound. And I've kind of illustrated those um, hydrogens uh, on the right-hand side. That's the methylene, those are the methines, and these are the meth methyls over in here. Oh, sorry, these guys here. Oops, sorry. These ones up here. These hydrogens on the methyl groups are all identical. Now we come to the replacement test. And in order to use the replacement test, um, or one of the criteria for using the replacement test, is to make note that the compound that you're looking at already has one chiral carbon. So there's a chiral carbon. Uh, because of the asymmetry of the molecule, I can say this is going to be A, uh, perhaps B for the alcohol, C for that, and then D for those, met that methyl group on the far end of the molecule. And then if you remember, there's two hydrogens here. Now one sticks out and one sticks back. So let's say you replace this hydrogen with whichever group that you want, but typically people say, well, we'll replace it with a deuterium. So we will replace it with a deuterium. The molecule looks like this. Or you can take that one and replace it with a deuterium, and then what you end up with is this. Oops, left my OH is off, so let me stick those back up there. And what you can see is the configuration at the number 2 carbon, that's the number 2 carbon, is the same, but the configuration of the number 3 carbon is now inverted. So these are uh, stereoisomers that are not mere images of each other. These are disteriomers of each other. And because they're disteriomers, what we know then is those two hydrogens produce separate distinct signals. So there'll be two signals for those. Those would be on my scheme here, A, B, C, D, they would be E and F. And so there would be a total of one, two, three, four, five, six signals for that compound. So let's look to see how we might be able to use uh, NMR to distinguish a compound just based on the number of signals. Now, in, pra in a practical sense, we don't usually do this. But for learning, it's a good illustration of um, how useful a small amount of information could be in determining a chemical formula. So these compounds, oh, excuse me, these compounds all have the same empirical formula. So let's figure out how many signals I expect to find for the first molecule. So I'm going to go like this and call that one. And so in compound number one, I have one, two, three, four, I don't have to do a replacement test because I don't have a stereo center on this molecule already. So there will be five different signals for this compound. Let's look at compound number two. Compound number two has one here. It has one here. And it has another one here. So I have one, two, three. And then if you notice, 
um, that the hydro the methyl groups that's this group and this group are mirrored of each other. So as a result, I would end up having one, two, three, four different peaks for this compound. And then let's look at compound number three. In compound number three, I have one for the OH group. I have me uh, methyl groups here. And what often people uh, mistakenly do is they say, well, there's a carbon, it must have hydrogens on it. But if you look at this one, it actually has four bonds to it, so there are no hydrogens here. So this third compound will have one, and then the question is, what's the relationship between the three sets of uh, methyl groups, methyl group hydrogens found on this molecule? If you do a rotation test, rotate around this bond, or if you have mere plane test, what you end up seeing eventually is that these three are chemically equivalent to each other. So in fact, this compound only produces two different signals. And the alcohol that we show here, 2-butanol, actually is the one that we did on the previous slide. We know that produces six. So just based on the number of NMR signals we see for hydrogens in this compound, we can make a determination of which of these structures best fits uh, the NMR spectrum. So that finishes up just uh, determining how many peaks there are in a signal. Now what we need to do in the next segment is determine how these hydrogens will interact with each other. If you remember, what we talked about is electron withdrawing groups. Electron withdrawing groups can cause a magnetic field shifts because what ends, or sorry, proton shifts, signal shifts, because the magnetic field is altered that the molecule experiences at a point because of the electronegative group. So we have deshielding that shifts groups, and we have shielding which shifts groups uh, upfield. But it turns out we also have other effects where we have to consider what the magnetic moments of the adjacent hydrogens um, do to each other. So that'll be in the next segment.